tonight we have on Connie from Electric Voice. How you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you, and thank you for staying up so late. I know it's a, a big time difference for us, <laughs> um, but 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 thank you. We we're going to talk about well, I want to promote. I want to talk about your new album. I mean, you've had for people. Let me just step back. I'm sorry. Let me step back. For people that don't or haven't listened to you in a little bit, they've been is shortchanging because okay. back in the late '80s, early '90s, you were hit with all lips and hips. Everybody knows that. But if that's where you stop, you shortchange yourself because they have continually put out strong, strong groove. You can tell me how you label yourself. Grooving albums. To this, this newest one, Upside Down, is just so, so strong and so ridiculous. Like you haven't, you guys are getting better, really. And, and, and I think it's important that people really just kind of grab onto your, other, your past albums too. There really has been no change, you know what I mean? So welcome to the show and welcome to... Um, Thanks, know, man. What, a, what a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I'm, glad, I'm glad you like it. I, it's ridiculously good. I mean, even, even the long intro in the beginning of, of Upside Down, when you go into it, the, the jam, it really kind of puts you into a, of a mood. And I know you guys always have like a bluesy, but kind of, kind of a rocky, the 70s, but then you kind of move around to different time periods. You don't really lock into a time zone. Um, and it's such a great jam. And it's, in creating this album, what was the inspiration for this album? Was it, the, you know, you guys... Do you guys look for different inspiration or is it just the songs you write the songs when you have enough songs you put together an album or are you just right. inspired by something basically what what has happened um for the last or for the latest albums uh i think it's it's that we um we've been writing for me mainly but 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 uh some of the stuff has been uh, written by co-written with the others and um, basically mm -hmm. it's an ongoing writing process and then uh, when there's enough songs then we listen to them and see which ones we like the, the, the best and that's what ends up being recorded for the album so it's not like we set out to do a you know let's do a harder album or a funkier album or, or anything like that it's uh, it's more just an ongoing process and then we pick the best ones or what at least mm -hmm. what we what we think are the best songs. Okay, it's usually interesting because sometimes, you know, bands do their, have an album cycle. Sometimes some people are just always writing and they feel they have a collection, it's time to go out for an album. Everybody has a different way of doing things. So you're yeah. probably more the main songwriter. You usually start off on an acoustic, are you doing electric or what is your usually your main, a lyric or? If it would be now, it would be this one. <laughs> Ooh. Or from our manager. Uh, just half hour ago but um no it's really just the the guitar that's that's handy for the moment and uh sometimes the song the song can start with a title or um or like a, a chorus melody and sometimes it can be a, a riff you know there's no there's no rules to it yeah there's no yeah. special secret <laughs> So clearly there's a blues influence, influence and love of blues with you guys. And I imagine it goes back to like, you know, like probably like old blues to even probably in the seventies and sixties and probably the faces and different types of rock bands from the sixties and seventies and, and, and even older blues stuff. What do you listen to now for bluesy influence? Is there anything new that you listen to? Blues is something uh, that's, that's like an underlying theme in, in all the stuff we like basically. Mm -hmm. It's not like I sit at home and listen to just like John Lee Hooker or Muddy Waters or, or something like that. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, basically all the, or most of the hard rock bands that we, that we've always liked from the 70s has, has that blues influence right. in the music. So it's, it's, it's always there in some, in some way. It's, you guys have it. It's, it's always, you can always tell yours is very strong. Yours doesn't get watered down. You can tell like the slide guitar. It's, it's very tasteful. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it makes you guys stand out different than some of the newer rock bands that are just rock with throwing the blues into it. You guys have that feeling all the time. It's, it's, you know, it's very, that's probably why you guys have that, would you call it a groove? Like, what would you guys say your kind of music are? You say it's a rock, blues rock, groove rock. What would you, 
it's kind of a gypsy feel. <laughs> uh, I, I think I would, nowadays, I think I would just say that we're classic rock, <laughs> I guess. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't want to label it. Just like, when I listen to you guys, I'm like, man, you guys just have your own sound. You know what I mean? Just kind of curious what you hear yourself as. It's not like a labeling as a put you in a Spotify situation. It's just like, what does it sound like to you? You know what I mean? To me, it's all just rock, but. Yeah. I think we've always been a little bit or quite varied. I mean, the, the, there was a reason why we why we named the first album Funko Metal Carpet Ride to begin with, that, that it had a, a lot of different inspiration sources and uh, it, it still is like that. I mean, within the four of us, we, or five as it is, we, we all listen to a lot of different music and a lot of different bands. And, and obviously you get inspired by all sorts of stuff. So I, I really don't know what, where, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, like I'm too close, it's like I'm too close to our stuff, to our songs to put a, put a label on them. Like that's it's better if you or someone else does it. Yeah, you know, I call I call it good rock. I was just wondering what you heard from it. I might maybe label it. I even probably misphrased it. It's just it's it's good. I was just curious how you felt it. Um, I think did you have a hard time transitioning from the the nineties when everything grunge came? Because you guys really weren't, you know, as we talk about, you weren't like a, a typical like a metal band. You guys were kind of put in there. But you know, where's the really who you guys are? You should, guys, your sound really hasn't changed much. You, you, you know, like, you've carried on, but everyone got kind of lumped in that one thing, and then everybody got tagged as being ne negative once that happened. Were you able to break free a little bit, maybe because you weren't so much an American band to kind of keep doing your thing without being labeled as a metal band? <clears throat> I don't think so. I mean, maybe we did, but it's it's not something that we were thinking about. It's like something people have say, been saying afterwards that uh that grunge came then came and like killed killed it all for yeah, us yeah. And, and all the other bands basically yeah. that, were, that was around at that time but I, I maybe to to a certain degree it's true but it, it it's not something that we were thinking we we were just moving on and doing our thing and then in the middle of all that we changed two members and ended up doing the third album, which ended up being a little bit uh, harder and a bit more 70s hard rock sounding maybe, mm -hmm. and less funky, or if you like. So, um, but yeah, there, there was a big change, of course, when Grunge came, uh, but I think it was a good change. In, and actually, in a way, I think Grunge was closer to, to us than a lot of the hair bands, if you like, or whatever. I mean, I certainly think grunge had more, went went more back to the roots, and, uh, you know. And, um, you know, I really liked um, some of those bands that, that came out at that time. Uh, so I, I don't know, I think it, it, it was good. It, it needed something to change uh a little bit it was interesting it, yeah it, I mean, made, it, it made the music a little bit more serious again and not I think so by, much by the time it came it was a or whatever yeah so by the, by the time it came it was like the third copy of a third copy of a band it wasn't like the original it was like everybody becoming van halen for the fifth time you know um a lot of bands changed some bands try to change and be like grunge some bands just took a break and some bands broke up and then some bands just you know, didn't change and kind of, you know, just did their thing until it came back, you know? So it was always interesting to see, you know, what the dynamics were, and you guys kind of always just did your own thing because you weren't really hair metal to um, begin with, really, you know, except for being played and maybe having flashy clothes, like, but that was like, everybody had clothes, you know, like that. Um, that, that was the only yeah, thing. The truth was always that, I mean, if you if you'd come and look at the the record collections we had, it, it was. I mean, I'm trying to remember. It's so long ago, but I mean, the reason I had long curly hair was was because um, first of all, I didn't want to have curly hair. I wanted straight hair. I wanted to look 
like you know Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood when I was a kid, but <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I realized okay I can't, and then I and then I uh, found out about um, Ian Hunter from Motor Hoople and, and and Mark Bolan of course, and they were and I'm I'm a big fan of that uh, 70s glam rock that English glam rock right. The Bowie, the Bowie stuff, Motte Hoople and um, T Rex, like, as I mentioned, and Slade and all, all those bands. So, so when I saw pictures of those two, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I can get away with a curly hair anyway. Like, like, <laughs> so for <laughs> for me, that was the my that was the connection for me. Uh, and um, and music wise, I mean, I was Nicholas was listening to. You know Led Zeppelin and all, all sorts of seventy. We we were all listening to that that kind of stuff. And well, you, it sounded like it. you guys didn't sound like you were trying to be a band of that time. You just sound like a rock band that had seventies and had other influences. You know what I'm saying? It, but you didn't sound at that time either like other bands. That was, you know, no, one well, of the great that's things. What, that's what I'm, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. The, we we were listening to. Basically, all the stuff we were listening to was really old stuff. <laughs> I mean, like, Which... I mean, the flashy clothes and everything goes back to, you know, Hendrix and the 60s psychedelia and stuff like that. So, um, and I mean, the reason we put metal in, in the title, Funk Metal Copyright, was just that at, at the time in Sweden, uh, all the bands were singing in Swedish, and it was really there wasn't much, hardly. I mean, there was hardly any rock music. Most of it was was uh, was pop, and so we felt that we. First of all, we felt that we're not we're not gonna get away with this. I mean, it's not gonna hap happen in Sweden. We gotta get out of Sweden and go to America and find yeah. the management. And stuff. But then, as, as it turned out, when we released the album, we got, you know, really good reviews everywhere, basically. So it turned out that that we came at the right, right time when, when there was a change. Uh, pe people were looking for a change, I guess. But um, How long had you been a band before you did that album? Because How long before your first album were you a band? Because that album, like I, before I sat down, like before I do a show, I sit down and listen to it. The newest albums, obviously, but I go back and listen to the old stuff side by side, and you, the maturity of the band for that first album was really. You guys were really tight then, you, you know. So, were you guys together for a real long time prior to that? Um, we started not very long. I mean, me and the bass player recorded all lips and hips as a single with the drum machine, eighty-seven. And the only reason we did that was that was because we couldn't find any any guys to play with. Um, so we figured if we do a single and get that out, and we could use that as like a I don't know, like a demo, and yeah, get a name out there, and maybe we'll be it will be easy to find the other members. But as it turned out, when we finally did find uh, Franco and Nicholas, they hadn't heard the single, so. <laughs> pointless but but so we released that 87 and found found the other guys a bit after that and then we re recorded and released the album made in nine so yeah it wasn't it wasn't that long but but i had been around doing stuff in finland with with various bands touring <clears throat> opening up for Hanoi rocks and okay. stuff like that because you know what i'm saying there's a there, there's a maturity to that album that most most soft you know most of our debut albums don't have it just it has a really it has roots in it. It feels like it feels like you were established and maybe that's just who you guys are and how you play, but you know, it holds up like like a strong you know in the catalog. It doesn't feel like it's a, you know, it's not a weak spot in it. Which is nice, you know. Yeah, but it was uh, in that. I mean, it wasn't like we had many years before that album, but but we we still worked hard at it. We rehearsed a lot and uh, worked on the demos a lot. And it was really, 
in, uh, like a, a good working process uh, inspire with lots of inspiration at the time. So we got a lot of stuff done in one or two years or something like that. When when before and when the album was recorded, so yeah. to speak. I guess it was like two years or something. But we we rehearsed a lot and practice makes perfect, as I say. Well, it shouldn't be perfect, but it get, makes it better anyway. Well, it it holds it holds the time. It's nice to have such a good strong album. And so not to go too much on it, but that, it, I just want to give you props on how good an album was. And then, you know, so you guys did a few other albums in between, and they've all been very strong. But we're, so Upside Down was released twenty twenty one during COVID. What was the challenge of that? Now you're getting ready to, to to tour it and promote it more than I know you guys had some, some singles out, some, you know, videos. But are you ready to do some touring with that? Yeah. The plans for it. Yeah. Big plans, but, like you're gonna try to really work. It's it's a good album. It really needs to, to be heard everywhere. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you said that. Um, yeah, we got the first. I mean, for the for the time being, we're doing shows from. August, September, October, but they're mainly they're over here in Scandinavia, and uh, and then of course we do the Monsters of Rock cruise uh, in February next year. So we were booked on the one that was the last, the, yeah. the one that was cancelled or or I keep, moved forward. I keep hearing about that. People keep saying I need to go. I don't know. I got fear of boats, but I might have to go one of these times. All you guys are on. Those, it sounds like it's a good time. It sounds the, like it's fun. The tour, oh, the boat, yeah. Boats. Yeah. Great. Time. I mean, yeah. Anybody should should go if they have a chance. <laughs> I, I might have I might have to do that. Um, yeah. With the production of this album, are you using the same producer? Have you been using? Are you producing? Co-producing? There's a certain sound you guys have. It's a very full sound. It's very rich. It's very analog sounding almost to me. Is that on purpose or just? It's a. Uh, we were using the same, same guy that we did uh, on the on the album before this one, Ghost yeah. Diary. He produced that album, but because we've, because we felt it was the best at that time. But but this time, um, he he was engineering just like he did the last time. But mm -hmm. but it's also produced. It's co-produced with him, me, and the bass player. Because it was a lot of, because of Corona and everything, a lot of the work was done outside of his studio. So we spent, I think, five days in in the big studio with him, putting down the bed tracks, and then we added vocals and stuff uh, on our on our own. It outside. sounds good on headphones, and then, and then he mixed yeah. it. Like, Usually I like to crank it out loud, but um, I've been listening to this album a lot with headphones. It sounds so good with really nice headphones, you know. Yeah, and... I agree. But he's he's great with um, sonics and uh, frequencies and stuff. He knows what to what what to do. <laughs> to make it does. It feel it. And it's really you know, it's good songwriting on it too. It's 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 um strong 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 song the whole way through. Um, so at this point, with the band, so you you did have a change a lineup change halfway through. We're all locked down. We all got our shots. We're all going to be able to tour. We're going to be good, <laughs> right? This is the whole band. Everyone's all set for the tour. Um, I, I, I guess the next I'll do this part right here. With I'm going to go back. I'm sorry, I forgot my one question I had for you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Which, was it the Starlight album or was it um, and then and then Boys Swing? Which album did you lose to the members turn? Which which album what, was it? The switch, what was the last album you had with a full lineup before you changed? What was the album that you changed on? Which, which album? With with I, I didn't hear what album. I'm sorry. With your lineup, the the first lineup before you lost members. Which what was the last album you guys did together? Uh, the uh, the Ghost World Diaries. That was so that's that's the last we did with the, this this lineup. Okay. And then with this new album, Upside Down, we yeah. we changed guitar player, which is the same guy that was on the third album. Oh, okay. 
It gets a little confusing. We kept it in the family. <laughs> okay. So we'll go back. Uh, one of the last things I like to talk about sometimes is gear and guitars. So you do play guitar. What is your, your go-to guitar that you have that you love? What's your favorite guitar? It's, uh, it's a Fender Stratocaster for sure. What year is it for Strat? What oh, year is it? I have a few. Not, not many. I have like uh, four Strats. But the, the main one is, uh, is a 63 which is the one I've had all the time. <clears throat> and the one I was touring with, with Electric Boys in the, in the old days. But then, because I've always had, had a good um, thing going with Fender, I had, a, but when they released the new, uh, they were called the Roadworn, Roadworn series, which were, they were made a kind of relic, but cheaper. Uh, you know, not like the custom relics, which yeah. which are really expensive. But if you find a good one, they they're really they're really good actually. So I had a chance when they released them to to uh, try out um, two out of eight. There was eight in the in the in the local guitar shop, and I found two that I thought was really really good. So that's what I've been using live mainly because. It takes away some stress, you know, about carrying around the old 63. Yeah. You don't want to worry about that. Do you, do you use any pedals? Do yeah. You pedal? What do you use for pedals? I'm quite old school uh, as, as far as that goes. It's uh, some, it depends on what, what amp it is, but there might be. There's always a fuss in there, and there's always a wow wah pedal, and there's always the small stone facer. <clears throat> um, I got a delay. Did I say wow wah pedal? I... I think you did, yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's it's pretty basic and it's pretty old school. A lot of people go simple. I'm just kind of curious what your guitars and your line because you have a really good sound. That's why I'm asking. I'm always you know interested in what you get for a sound. It's 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 a good sound. It's a lot of older sound, so it's 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 a good steady sound. I'm also, I mainly I've been a fan. I mean, a Marshall guy when it comes to amps, but but I've I've found that you know nowadays amps have become. I mean, even the bad amps have become much better. So yeah. I mean, you can you can get a pretty good sound out of quite a few different different amps, really. Well, neither, Sometimes I'm playing Fender app with, with like yeah. some overdrive pedal, so there's like a clean platform, and then you use an overdrive pedal. But if it's a Marshall, then it's obviously better just to turn it up and and um, so the the power tubes. Uh, it's it's very old school, but it still works. Nothing wrong with that. It's a good sound. That's that's what I like to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone has it, and everyone's been breaking down their their rigs a lot lately too. They're very simple rigs now, where they can compact it, or you know, because you you can program stuff now and just bring it when you know all your sounds into a small piece of gear and put it into any amp. You know, nowadays with technology, you can you know copy everything. It's interesting you know, how people are. Everyone's going live and what they're doing for for their technique. You know, but simple is what a lot of rock bands are still doing because it's just easier. You know, a couple guitars. Throw it in a bag and go, you know. You can get Marshalls at Apple anywhere, you know. So it's, it's, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I want to thank you. I want to just, I just want to touch base with you tonight and just kind of talk about this album and put it out there. And I'm going to put all the dates and everything you're doing underneath the show. So people can check you out. I'll put your, you know, all your Instagram, your, your Facebooks, all your media and links to your album. I encourage people to check it out. Wear your headphones when you do it see these guys when they play um you kick it man you're awesome you're still killing it um thank you for your time tonight man well thanks a lot man it's I it's think a pleasure